What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in with Cali. Please like, subscribe if you haven't. So, after the game against the uh, Clippers, the Dallas Mavericks versus the Clippers, Luka Doncic was asked, was, you know, what was his honest assessment of the game? And did the Kawhi Leonard situation affect them? Simply because, of course, like Luka and Kyrie answered that they came into the game with the expectation that Kawhi would play. But Kawhi didn't play. And, of course, I'm pretty sure that the Clippers knew way before, you know, game before the game started that Kawhi Leonard wasn't going to play. I'm pretty sure they knew a few days prior that he wasn't going to play. It was just more like a chess match. And even Kyrie Irving said that. And, you know, Luka responded that, you know, he really didn't know whether the Kawhi Leonard thing affected them or not. But either way, they lost the game. And, you know, the one thing Luca pointed out was that they've basically, in so many words, they basically found some momentum because the second half was not like the first half. The second half, they got some stops. The second half, they outscored the Clippers and all these things. But what Luca's not realizing is you still lost the game. And based upon what the Clippers gave in regards to their output, it might be a reenactment of that in game two, even if Kawhi Leonard doesn't play. Because if you think about it from a standpoint of Paul George didn't even shoot well, didn't even have a good shooting night. I mean, he had like five points at halftime and they're still up by 20 plus points. I mean, that's 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 unreal. I mean, I mean, he had he had five more points than Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard didn't even play, and they were still up by twenty plus points on your team, who had your, yourself, Luka Doncic, and Kyrie Irving, and all these so called pieces that everybody talked about that made y'all such a better team. And what, what, but no, but what nobody talked about, none of the media people talked about, is the pieces that they added: PJ Washington and Guilford and all these other guys. I mean, these guys come from teams like the Washington Wizards and teams like that. They're not coming from playoff teams and playoffs atmosphere type teams where they have experience and they played at high levels on the highest level at the postseason, you know, so in the postseason. They're not coming off of teams like that. They're not coming off of, you know, uh, teams of that nature and they don't have that type of experience. So when you're playing guys like, you know, Kawhi, PG, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, they're not on that level. They really not. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Luka Doncic and Kyrie is, but you see them two doing what they they do is just not enough. Especially like when you think about what happened in yesterday's last night's game. Luka Doncic had 33, I think. I think Kyrie had 31 or or was reversed. But either way, both of them had over 30 points and it still wasn't good enough. They scored 60 plus points and they still lost. And they still lost by a wide margin. That score, 109 to 97, that really doesn't dictate or really give you an outcome of what the game really was like. I mean, honestly, the Clippers really took their foot off the gas, if you ask me, because, I mean, they're up by 20-plus points in the first half. And like I said, Kawhi didn't even play and Paul George had five points. That should never happen uh, against any team without the firepower of those two players. But it also goes to show how much firepower the Clippers have, and it also goes to show the other weapons that they have in regards to, you know, James Harden and, you know, Russell Westbrook. They got weapons that they can really attack you in different ways, especially if you're a team that's really not defensively inclined. Now, a lot of analysts were sitting there picking the Mavericks to beat the Clippers in seven games, which is still a long series. Don't get me wrong. The Mavericks will come out, you know, a little bit better than game two. But at the same time, even if they come out better in game two, it doesn't mean they're going to win the game. Because like I said, the Clippers overall, their team is just better. I mean, if you look at the fact that the the Clippers didn't shoot well in regards to like some of the players. Well, I mean, you can say that for Dallas also, but who is Dallas really going to have that's really going to step up as that third guy that's going to give them consistent points, consistent minutes every single game of this series that they can count on? They don't have nobody like that. I mean, when I look at their roster, I don't see a third guy that can go out there and give me... 15 to 20 points every single game on the Dallas Mavericks. I don't see that. But when I look at the Clippers, they got multiple guys that can play a third role. I mean, hypothetically, if Kawhi didn't play the rest of this series, you you still got Paul George and you still got um, James Harden. The third guy, of course, is Russell Westbrook. And even Russell Westbrook has an off game. Their other third guy is Norman Powell. And speaking of Norman Powell, he only had like five points. 
You think he's going to score five points every single game this series? One of these games or a couple of these games this series, he's going to score in the double digits. Then it's going to be a, then it's going to be more pressure applied on Dallas' defense to try to stop him because he's the one guy that they really might not be accounting for that much. And even if they do, you got to hope that Zubak doesn't have another game like he had. I mean, he had 20 points and 15 rebounds. I mean, he played really inspiring basketball. I know James Harden was the player of the game, and he was the best player on the floor. But the second best player on the floor, really, I mean, you could have made a case for Zubak. Because Zubak really kind of gave them a different atmosphere, a different feel for a team. Because, I mean, if they can just throw it into the paint in him and let him work and go against Derek Lively and um, whoever else they had down there, I mean, he was just killing them in the paint. So, I mean, like if Zubak can come out and give you numbers like that and, you know, add it with James Harden and Paul George, what they give you, and then, you know, Russell Westbrook comes in off the bench along with Norman Powell, I don't think the Dallas Mavericks can beat them the way they're currently constructed. I mean, based upon what I saw yesterday. Now, of course, it's one game. We can't overreact over one game, but we can. We have to speak on the analysis based upon what we saw. And what we saw is the Dallas Mavericks look overmatched with just with what the Clippers had on the floor yesterday. Damn, that's not even having Kawhi Leonard, the best player in the whole damn series. If Kawhi Leonard's on the floor, I don't think they win a game. I mean, it's possible they could because maybe their game plan is a little bit different or something like that. But, I mean, even if you double-team Kawhi, that still leaves Paul George open. You double-team Paul George, that still leaves James Harden open. You double-team him, hell, Terrence Mann knocked down a few shots yesterday. So, I mean, if he can you know, if he can just you know keep his confidence and knock down a few threes, now you can't double-team anymore. If you can't double-team with Kawhi on the floor or and or PG on the floor, you're in trouble. They tried that double teaming crap with Paul George yesterday, kind of took him out of his game. Paul George really wasn't in his rhythm like that. And like I said, they double teamed in the beginning. But like I said, he had a nickel, five points at halftime, and they're still about 20 plus points because you gave James Harden all the free way he all the free will he needed. One on one, one on one coverage. He beats that most of the time. And then on top of that, if he's not beating that, I mean, you he had wide he had a wide open three. So it's like Either way is pick your poison with them. And then when you double team or when you try to throw a disguise of double team at him, either he would kick it to back to PG or PG would throw it right into the paint with Zubak and Zubak would cook Derek Lively or whoever they had in the paint at that time. So I understand what Luka Doncic is saying that they played better in the second half and all that, but that could be due to the fact that the Clippers kind of took their foot off the gas because, I mean, the Clippers were smoking, y'all, without their best player and their second best player played a little bit above average. I mean, if that's the case, damn, they might not. I mean, shit, I, hell, they might not need much services from Paul George. Paul George might only have to score 20 points a game this whole series to beat Dallas. Because it's not like, I mean, like I said, you had Luka and Kyrie go for 60 plus points yesterday and they still lost by double digits. It's not like they lost by five to eight points. They lost by double digits. They lost by 12. And it would have been more than that, probably, you know, if if, if the Clippers really wanted to put their foot on the gas even more. So, I mean, I, I understand where Luka's coming from. You know, you, you want to build off a little bit of confidence you had and stuff like that. But I can tell you this much. If the, if the Dallas Mavericks do not win next game, which I don't believe they will, I believe the Clippers are going to smoke them again. Um, with or without Kawhi Leonard, but if they don't win next game, I mean, I yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if the Clippers sweep them. It really wouldn't because, I mean, like I said, I, I don't see anybody on that team that can get their own shot besides Luka and Kyrie. And then you got players like Tim Hardaway Jr. He's He's okay, but he's not somebody that can take somebody off the dribble and get his own shot. And all these other guys, I don't even know who they are. Like, and then you got Maxi Kleber. His sorry ass is still on there. They should have been got rid of his ass. I mean, I don't even know why the Dallas Mavericks think. I don't even know why these stupid ass analysts think that the clip that the 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 Mavericks are going to go far with players like Maxi Kleber for crying out loud. I mean, he's just ultimately trash all the way around. I mean, Luca yelled at him yesterday in the game, put two hands on a damn ball because he's tender as hell. So, I mean, it's like, I don't even know why they think they, I don't even know why people think the, the, the Mavericks can beat the Clippers or go to the finals or go to the conference finals with what they have. Because when you think about it, their team is, is tender as hell. Their team is soft. 
They really are. And I don't think nobody respects anybody on that team. Zubak was going at Zubak was scoring against them like like it was nobody even standing in the paint. I mean, Zubak rarely has games like that with 20 plus points and 15 plus and double digit rebounds. Zubak rarely has games like that. So the fact that he rarely has games like that should tell you there is no respect for what the Dallas Mavericks has body-wise in the paint. There's no respect for the defenders that they have. I mean, I, I just, like I said, I'm surprised Paul George even struggled yesterday because I just don't think nobody on that team could check Paul George. I mean, if we're just being honest, I mean, Paul George could probably drop 30 every single game if he really wanted to. This this, this is, I mean, I, I just feel like Paul George, you know, in this situation here, I'm not going to blame him because it's like he's just playing down to his competition because he know whoever the hell is on Dallas can't guard him. They can't. I mean, James Harden looked like James Harden from – it looked like James Harden had on a Houston Rockets jersey yesterday. It really did. That's how – I mean, that's how much I think the Clippers don't respect Dallas's defense. They respect Dallas in regards to the rivalry because Luka's there and all those things. But if the Clippers really play defense like they played yesterday and neutralize all those other guys, like I said, when Luka's not getting 40 and 15 assists, Dallas is beatable every single time. You when Lucas scores like forty points and get like six, seven assists, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I mean that, that that's that's when Dallas is beatable. When when he scores, excuse me, when he scores forty and eleven or something like that, they're they're damn near unbeatable. When he scores forty points or thirty points and 11, 12, 15 assists, they're damn near unbeatable. But when he scores like 30, 40 points and he only has six or seven assists or under double digit assists, they're beatable every single time. I keep trying to tell people that that is the key to Dallas. Neutralize all those other players. Let him and Kyrie cook all day long because those are only two players that really give you any trouble. Those are only two players that can really take somebody off the dribble. Those are only two players that can get their own shot whenever they choose to. And they're the only two players that are the most dominant on the team. So everybody else is like, you know, uh, just secondary, you know, they're just they're, they're nothing compared to what the Clippers have. I mean, they're nothing, honestly. I mean, I just, it's it's not even it's not even a match to me. It's a mismatch to me. So all these analysts saying all this stupid shit about, you know, the Dallas Mavericks and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, Dallas is going to make it interesting, I believe, maybe, because they just have a history with the Clippers. But ultimately, in the end, the Clippers definitely should win the series because it's like we saw yesterday. I mean, the Dallas Mavericks were just overmatched. They were just overmatched. And like I said, Paul George struggled and they were overmatched. Kawhi didn't even play and they were overmatched. Norman Powell had five points off the bench, which is rare for him. Usually he comes in, he just always, you know, lit up on fire. He had an off game and they still were overmatched. Is that going to happen every single game this series? No, it's not. So really, unless Dallas has some secret weapon that they ain't showed nobody, honestly, I mean, they might make it interesting, but really... I don't really see there's no way they can win this series.